Shota ma karabrata tarasota. Praise God, hello there, friend. Bless you, bless you. <laughs> What's going on, people of God? This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim here live from Scott's Dizzy, Scottsdale in Arizona. Comment below where you're watching from. A hey, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Comment below where you are watching from, friends. Today, I want to talk about dealing with a vagabond spirit. Have you been feeling restless? Have you been wandering? I want to talk to you about dealing with a vagabond spirit because many of you have probably encountered these vagabonds, these wanderers. Uh, you yourself, you may also be feeling like a vagabond yourself. But today I wanna to talk to you about dealing with vagabond spirits. This is one of your favorite prophetic voices, Dr. Pastor Ben Lim. I'm here in Scottsdale, Arizona, and I'm very happy that the sun is now coming out. Can I get an amen? And of course, one of the words that the Lord prophesied through me concerning this year in 2023 is that there will be records breaking this year. And of course, records have been breaking in Southern California, even in Los Angeles. I had friends who were at Disneyland yesterday and it was snowing in Disneyland in Anaheim, California. So today I wanna to talk about dealing with a vagabond spirit but there are records breaking, my friends, and there are things happening and taking place in the name of Jesus. So I want you to comment below where you are watching from. Share this on your wall, tag somebody, because today I believe there's gonna be freedom and deliverance over your life. And today I wanna give some wisdom and insight and prophetically talk to you about dealing with vagabond spirits. Because many of us, we are transitioning to another level and realm of glory. So you yourself, you might feel like a vagabond, all right? But I'm gonna to talk to you. We're gonna go into the word of the Lord. Continue to give us some hearts and likes, praise God. Comment below where you are watching from, amen. This is one of your favorite prophetic voices, Dr. Pastor Benlam. I do wanna give you some shout outs, praise God. I see people jumping on, hello there. Sarah from South Africa, Amy, good to see you. Can't wait to be with you and Becky and the whole family in Pennsylvania very soon. Patricia Benton, God bless you. Thank you, Michael, Deborah, Escobar, hope to see you. Landry Skeet, man, I can't wait to see you and your beautiful family. Melissa, good to see you. We're just down the street from you here in Scott's Tizzy. Harabatas, Celeste, Zambia in the house. God bless you. Atlanta, amen, God bless you. Glory, glory, vagabond is an actual curse, no growing roots. Exactly, and we're gonna get into that today. Anthony Carabayo, good to see you, my friend. Yes, Prophet Ivana, I prophesied that I saw LA being covered in snow in 2020, and that will be a sign of the spirit of the fear of the Lord covering the city of Los Angeles. I was looking for that prophetic word so I could put that up. But uh, come to Northern California. You know, it's so odd, isn't it? Uh, that I, I don't, I, I Last year, I ministered in Tascadero, which is Central Coast, California. But I have not yet ministered in Northern California. You already know, the NorCal boys cannot handle the SoCal glory. But anyways, we love NorCal. Providence Ivana, bless you from DTLA. Prophet Luis uh, Marcella, I hope to see you guys tonight or even this weekend. Karen Tom, bless you. Glory, glory, glory. Continue to comment below where you are watching from. Give us some hearts and likes. Tag this on your wall, share this with somebody. Because today I wanna to go into dealing with vagabond spirits. And you yourself, you might feel or sense that you are a vagabond or that you are dealing with vagabond spirits or something of that nature. And I wanna to talk to you. I wanna to minister to you and speak to your spirit. Amen. Michigan in the house, wonderful. New Zealand, we got some Kiwis here. God, Long Beach, snow as well. Yeah, exactly. I'm in Arizona, are you doing a meeting this weekend? Claudia Hayden, yes I am. Just go to my Facebook page or my website, benlimglobal.com and everything will be there. Ava Sandoval, good to see you from New Mexico. Kim from New York. Thank you, Jurgen Meyer, thank you, thank you. I wanna say friends, it's good to be here in Arizona. I do love Arizona and I do love Scottsdale. Um, but it's been pouring rain and snow 
has been covering Los Angeles. I mean, these are signs and wonders. Signs that make you wonder. And uh, yesterday, as we were here in Scottsdale, Arizona, and Phoenix area, and as it was pouring rain, let me tell you, been pouring rain, and I just felt this hunch in my spirit as yesterday was March 1st, and we're starting off the month of March with an outpouring. Someone said, amen, with an outpouring of the glory of God. And I felt this strong sense in my spirit that the Lord is saying he's getting ready to pour out the heavens, vats to overflow, financial overflow, financial abundance, financial glory, that this is a time and season where there's going to be great, great overflow and vats all across the earth. So I do believe right now we are in a season of overflow and the tipping point and the bowls of heaven are being filled to overflow. Amen. So continue to comment below where you're watching from. Good to see you, CC. Tia B. Yadamio. God bless. God bless. I want to talk to you about vagabond spirits and dealing with a vagabond spirit. And you know what? Let me just bring this right off the bat. There's a lot of people on social media that are vagabonds who are moving and operating out of a vagabond spirit. And you know, to be a vagabond, it means, yes, you are a wanderer, but it also means that you are an orphan. You're moving out of an orphan spirit. So every single thing that you do, you're doing it for acceptance. You're doing it to be received. But I want to tell you that there is a group that God has prepared and reserved that will receive you and that will celebrate you. And there is a people group that the Lord has set apart for your life. Amen. How do you share this? Um, you just click the share icon. Amen. Just click the share icon. Glory, glory. Yes. And let me, um, let me tell you tonight where I'm ministering at Scottsdale tonight, tomorrow night, Saturday night, uh, Friday night, I'll be in a uh, house fires church in Mesa, Arizona. And even Sunday, I'm ministering at Gateway Mesa Hub in Mesa with my good friends, Pastor Steve and Pamela Mercado. Amen. Let's continue to get the numbers up, get the algorithms up, my friends. One of your favorite voices are here in the house of God, in this broadcast. And I pray that every single one of you, you will tap in and you will receive in the name of Jesus. I want you to tag a vagabond. <laughs> I want you to tag a vagabond minister on social media. Oh, we're coming in hot today. Rebese. I want you to tag people who find their identity in social media and how many likes and hearts they get and their following and their so-called influence. So I want you to tag some of those friends because today we're going to believe for a spirit of deliverance upon the vagabonds and that the spirit of God will give us wisdom to deal with the vagabond spirits. Glory to God. Is it freezing? Do you hear me well? Do you hear me and see me clearly? People are commenting. It's freezing. It's not freezing. It's finally sunny in, in, here in Arizona. But amen, amen, and amen. So the reason why I want to talk about this today, in fact, I wanted to talk about something else. I wanted to talk about angels of awakening that I believe are being spread across the earth, being released all across the earth. And I even wanted to talk about, uh, I wanted to talk about something else. But the Lord, as I was preparing for this broadcast, he said, talk about a vagabond spirit. Do you know why? Because many of us are in transition. Many of us are in transition. And when you are in transition, it can mean that you are feeling like a wanderer. You feel like you don't belong. You feel like you're restless. And I want to talk to those people that feel like you're restless. I want to talk to those people who do not have a resting place, who feel like you are all over the place and you're scattered rather than being aligned and rather than being centered. And now I declare and I decree in this month of March, there is a centering anointing. And I declare right now in this month of March that the spirit of God is going to give you rest. Remember, rest is a part of restoration. And when you receive restoration, you receive rest from all your enemies. God puts all your enemies to rest. Amen. 
So friends, I want you to just jump on and I want you to log in and I want you to help us break the 100 mark and break this algorithm today in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. So if you are in transition, I want you to say amen. If you are in the middle of a transition, I want you to say amen. Because many people who feel like they're in transition, you may feel like you don't have anywhere you can call home. You don't have anywhere you can rest your head. Jesus said, foxes have holes and birds have nests. But the son of man has no place to rest his head on. Now, some people think that that means that Jesus was a poor hippie. Some people think that means that Jesus believes in socialism and communism. And he does not own a thing on the earth. Now, that is far from the contextual truth. Jesus' parents, Joseph and Mary, they actually had a, quite a large home. If you ever visit Israel, and by the way, I am going to Israel in the month of September, October, during the Feast of Tabernacles. So you can join me and message, email us if you're interested in joining me in Israel during the Feast of Tabernacles. We are fulfilling biblical prophecy. Amen. But you see, Jesus, Yeshua, he had a home. His parents' home was large, quite large for the modern average Jewish citizen of that day. But many people, when you read the scripture or when you interpret the scripture, foxes have holes and birds have nests. But the Son of Man has no place to lay their head. People think that Jesus is some kind of codependent, wandering hippie who doesn't have a house, who doesn't have a place to say no. What Yeshua is mentioning is that in contrast, Jesus as a traveling itinerant evangelist minister as a healing man of God, Yeshua is saying that he does not necessarily have a place to settle in because he belongs to the world. He belongs everywhere. And so when you are in the middle of transition, you yourself, you may feel like a vagabond spirit. You may feel like you're a vagabond. And why is that? Because you're leaving one place and going to another. You're leaving one location, one dimension, and you're going to another. And the Lord wanted me to talk about dealing with a vagabond spirit today because many of us are in transition and he wants to give you rest. He wants to give rest to the weary soul, to the restless, to the ones who feel like they don't belong, to the ones who feel like they've always been out of a cool group or a club or a certain circle. I break the algorithms now. In Jesus' name. But there is a group of people that God is saying, I have brought you out and you do not fit in. It's because of how I've made you, created you, and designed you. So you're not meant to fit into this club, into this church, into this ministry for a reason and for a purpose. It doesn't mean you're rebellious. It doesn't mean that you have a spirit of rebellion or you have a spirit of being unsubmissive. It just means that there is no adequate, suitable place to properly host, receive, and to help nurture and grow you to the next level. If you're following me and if this is making sense to you so far, I want you to say amen and give us some hearts and likes. Now here in Genesis 4, 12. Genesis chapter 4, verse 12. The Bible says that Cain became a wandering vagabond, a restless wanderer. I want to say restless. Why is that? This is the first mention, the power first mention in the Bible. And whenever you study the Bible, the word of God, you always look at the power first mention. And Cain, of course, killed his brother Abel. That was the brotherly feud of Cain and Abel. And Cain murdered his brother Abel, and tried to cover it up, of course. And because of that, the Lord banished him, rejected him. And there was a curse of a vagabond spirit upon Cain. Now, being a vagabond, it is a curse. But who here knows that God sets the lonely in families? 
God is a covenant keeping God. He is a father. He's a family man. Therefore, he builds family with the rejected ones. Now, I want you to catch this. David was running away from King Saul. Why? Because the religious spirit was trying to kill and murder the next generation. Whenever you see revival or awakening, whenever you see a new breed rising up, the old generation, the old guard, our fathers and mothers will many times be the first ones to try to come against you, to kill you, and to murder you, assassinate you, and to stop the move of God. So what do we see with King David? David was anointed as king, and he ran away into the cave. The Bible says he went to the cave of Abdullah, and in that cave, there were, come on somebody, there were 300 men that gathered around him. I believe the number may be 500, excuse me. Uh, but there was three or 500 men that came around him in that cave. During David's most horrific lowly point, he was banished. He was rejected. Someone say preach, Dr. Ben. He was rejected. The old guard chased him away. The old generation, the fathers, the mothers, kicked him out, tried to kill him, destroy his ministry, his name. And therefore, he became a vagabond. I would, in a sense, rather be a wanderer with God. Because if you're with God, you're, you're never truly wandering. But I would rather be a wanderer with God than be settled in the comforts of the castles of Jezebel. Then compromise my oil and my future with the religious guard of Saul. If you hear me, say amen. And I want you to give us some hearts and likes. So here's David as he's hiding away in the cave of Abdullah. There are hundreds of people who gathered around him. And the Bible says the three Ds in debt, financial debt. They were uh, in debt. They were distressed. And they were also um I believe it was depressed. There were the three Ds, in depth, distressed, and they were depressed. And as David ran away in the cave of Adullam, I want you to hear this. A group of people came to him. I want to talk to you. Many times when you are shakaraba, when you are on the brink of something new, you must separate yourself from the old. You must separate yourself from those. You must separate yourself from which you are comfortable with because you will find that there is a whole remnant and a whole group that also feels and believes and talks and walks and desires the same thing as you. Thank you, Anthony. Con discontented. They were not satisfied with life. They met David at that cave, at the hiding place, at the threshing floor. And guess what? They all became David's mighty men. They became David's mighty men. Now, I want to talk to you because being banished or rejected from an old religious spirit or guard is not a bad thing. It's not, a, it's not an evil negative thing. It is if it's a curse. Now, I want to talk to you because no man can curse what God has blessed. No devil can curse what God has blessed. You cannot be cursed if you are blessed and chosen by God. You cannot ever be rejected if you are accepted by the Father, by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. So I, I'm, I'm bringing this teaching to you with a, a, a platitude of, of a play of words. And I hope you're catching this because vagabond is a negative curse. It means to be a fugitive. It means to be a wanderer. It means to be restless. Vagabond means to move around and around to and fro. And you feel like you're out of place. You have nowhere to rest, nowhere to dwell. Shikarabata. Are you wandering? Are you a vagabond? Are you constantly going to this person's meeting, to that meeting? Are you jumping from broadcast to broadcast, looking for another prophetic word? You want a prophetic word? Read the Bible. 
You want a prophetic word? Get in the glory. Seek the face of God. You want a word from heaven? Get your identity rooted and grounded in Christ alone, not in the opinions of man or not in their false prophecies. And vagabond spirits who are orphans, who are wanderers, they keep moving around and around and they have no commitment. Now, commitment has become a cuss word in the American church today. Most people are not committed above their self-centered, narcissistic selves. Oh, what's in it for me? Why should I do this? What's in it for me? What's the buy-in? What's the reason? Oh, the devil is a liar. The reason is Jesus is king. And because his love compels you. And because we obey. That's worship. That's love. And I sense in my spirit today, God is wanting to deal with the vagabond spirit because your days of restlessness is over. Your days of wandering around and around and around is over. Your days of moving around to and fro, feeling like you do not belong, no root system, no security system, no depths, no deepening of the Holy Ghost. Those days are over. And God is saying, he is breaking the vagabond curse, the fear of commitment, uncertainty off of people in Jesus' name. Now let's talk about the vagabond spirit. Let's go a little bit deeper. When you are dealing with a vagabond spirit, you are stuck in a spirit of pride and you are stuck in a spirit of religion. Do you know why? Because people who operate in a vagabond spirit believe that they have no spiritual father or mother. There is no need for accountability. There is no need for pastors. <laughs> there is no need for leaders in their life. People who deal with a vagabond spirit are in religion and they are deceived. Because those who deal with a vagabond spirit would rather be a hippie, would rather be a crazy, schizophrenic, lunatic, homeless person in the middle of the streets lawless, doing whatever the heck they'd like. But those who have a vagabond spirit have a spirit of religion and pride and they need deliverance. They need a sound mind. They need revelation. Do you know why? Because we need you and you need me. You cannot make it all alone. You cannot make it alone. You cannot make it or live this life going through it alone. You need the body. You need the body of Christ. We're all connected. We're all different parts of the body. If you're with me today, say amen. Now, how does a lion, the predator, attack its prey? The predator will single and isolate one of the young, one of the older, come on somebody, one of the stragglers. Oh, you're saying, yeah, Pastor Ben, I'm obeying Jesus. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm walking a little bit slowly than the others. You know, I'm walking with an attitude. Yeah, I, I love the Lord. And, you know, I'm in this, but, you know, because, you know, I'm unsubmissive and I like to do things my way. I like to be defensive and be argumentative and I like to flash out my own opinions. Therefore, I'm a little bit behind because I'm walking with a swagger like I'm cool Mick Jagger. But if you do that, that enemy sees you as a target. Because now you are a straggler. So people with a vagabond spirit are open to attack. To be raided by the enemy. To be invaded by the enemy. Now, now I, I want you to hear this. People who deal with a vagabond spirit, they're everywhere, but they're nowhere. They're busy, but they have no fruit. They talk and talk, but they don't have walk. They're all over the place. They're scattered brains, scattered mind, but they don't have soundness. People who deal with a vagabond spirit. And I believe right now there is a conflict, conflict. And I, I need you to hear this because those who deal with a vagabond spirit, it's a curse. The Bible says they're banished from the land banished you become a fugitive you are no longer 
allowed back to the land of the United States. You are no longer allowed back to my home. Otherwise, you're trespassing. And you know what happens to trespassers in my home? Oh, you better run. Because a shotgun has a number of cartridges. You better run. So people who are vagabonds, they're spiritually banished. Now, I want you to hear this on the flip side. Cain was banished. Cain was cursed. Cain was forever exiled, expelled. But I want you to hear this because I believe in the season. The Lord is going to bring the vagabonds around. The Lord himself is going to turn the vagabonds around. There's going to be a restoration and a reconciliation with those that are out of the wilderness, those in the boonies, those that are hiding, those that are off in the mountains, because some of them, hear me now, have been banished by a religious spirit. Some of them have been banished by, because of a spirit of Jezebel has inducted, indoctrinated, and intoxicated a congregation or a region. Therefore, the prophets have been ousted and kicked out. How many times have we seen this? Even in the United States, we see Jezebel was so afraid of Trump. And you might say, well, Trump was proud. Trump was, you know, all full of himself. And, you know, he's a mean tweet hashtag. Would you have mean tweets? Or would you, or do you want to fail in your economy? And you're paying, what, $20 for a dozen of eggs. But I'm sharing this. Because some of those who had been vagabonded or banished, rejected, some of those people that have been rejected are the ones that God's going to bring back and are the ones that are going to lead this move of God. Now, I want to talk to you right now. There's some people right now, they are vagabonds and they're saying, you know what, we don't need institutional church. We forget the four walls of a church building. That's not the church. We are the church. There's so many people who are deceived. So deceived. So therefore, they think they're going to lead the move of God. I'm sorry, honey. God is going to humble the proud and raise up the humble. Because he will use the nobodies to become a somebody. He will use the ones who have no name, no face, to become a name and to become his face. He will use those that seem to be rejected and he will cause them to be the capstone, the cornerstone. So in this season, there's going to be a restoration of the vagabonds. In this season, there's going to be a restoration of the vagabonds. And hear this, some of you right now are experiencing something like a vagabond because you're in the middle of transition. If I'm talking to you, I want you to say amen. If you're following me right now, I want you to say hallelujah because some of you are in the middle of a transition, therefore you feel like you're a bit of a deserter. You feel like you're a bit of a wanderer. You're wandering, you're going around to, where do I belong? Where's my tribe? Where's my family? Where's my people? Who do, who do I commit myself to? Well, you know what? Maybe, just maybe, you are meant to lead a whole movement. You are meant to lead a whole breed, a whole bunch. Let me tell you about my life. I didn't fit in these circles. I didn't fit in these cool clubs. I didn't fit in these groups of people. In fact, people would judge me, look down on me because of my age, because I had fire, because of my style because of my dress because of whatnot but we created our own culture and our own family and movement so the lord will many times separate you so that he can elevate you and some of you are feeling the uneasiness the unsettlingness but the Lord is going to settle your spirit. God is going to ease your spirit. Shatana Matarada Dorosa. 
And it doesn't mean you're being rebellious. Now, I want you to hear this. One of my mentors, Tony Kim, he always says this. He always says that there's a difference between a rebellious spirit and a heart of re uh, reformation. Some people think that you may be rebellious when you actually have a heart for reformation, to change, to change the form, to reform something in society and in the church world. Doesn't mean you're rebellious. Doesn't mean you're proud. It just means that you're called to be a reformer. And let me tell you, friends, in these days right now, praise God, in these days, the Lord is calling the orphan home. He's calling the vagabond home. In these days. And those who once were vagabonds or felt like they were rejected, ousted out, misplaced. I believe if they humble themselves and get their character and their heart right with God, they will be the ones that will lead this next move and the next generation. But you have to get your heart right. You have to make sure there's no bitterness, there's no offense, no animosity. Even the Jesus revolution about Lonnie Frisbee and Chuck Smith. If you saw that movie, say I did. I watched that movie, I cried. I didn't cry as much as I thought I would, but I did cry and it was good. It was a very, very well done movie. However, again, it grieved me to see what happened with Chuck Smith and Lonnie Frisbee. And you know what? That was more light in the movie. <clears throat> but in real life, Lonnie was so rejected and so dishonored. But who here knows that God is the one who honors the humble? The Bible says, I will give you double honor for your shame. So who here knows that God is the one who gives you double honor in the areas where you've been put to shame by those who thought loved you, who thought were for you. But it's in those areas where God will bring double honor. Why am I sharing this? Because the Lord used Lonnie Frisbee, who seemed to be a vagabond, rejected from a move, from a movement, rejected from these circles, from Calvary Chapel, rejected from the popularity and the norm of church and churchianity and with society. But if you have your heart right in the Lord, in the Holy Ghost, then the Lord will use you mightily because some people are not meant to be a part of the system. The Lord has kept and reserved and preserved some of you by actually kicking you out of the system, by putting you outside instead of inside with all the cool kids in the cool club. The Lord actually protected you and he had a plan and a purpose and a future and a destiny for you. Therefore, he actually preserved and reserved you and he protected you by keeping you outside before the fall. Are you hearing me? The Lord used Lonnie Frisbee, who was a vagabond. And I pray that the Lord will use you. And your life is not finished. You're not done. God is far from being done with you and with your life. Amen. The Lord is far from being done with you in your life. So don't ever let anybody write you off or try to finish your story. Because Jesus is this author and a finisher of your faith. I'm talking to you, my friends, because in this season, those who seem to be the vagabond, the rejected, the deserter, the one who's wandering around and around and around. Those who are out and about and they're not accepted. Those are the ones, watch, that God will use, anoint, and raise up for such a time as this. Those are the ones, but we must have our hearts right. 
purified, pressed, purged by the love of God. Father, forgive them for they, not, they do not know. They do not know of. Father, forgive them. Someone say amen. Father, forgive them. So God is breaking off a vagabond spirit. And number two, I believe God is restoring and healing and reconciling those who were banished or were once a vagabond. And then number three, God will use the vagabond, the one who's on the outside, to lead this move and this next generation in his next season. Someone say hallelujah. But hear me now. If you are forever accepted by God, and if the religious system crucifies you and kicks you out, then were you ever a vagabond? No, you, beloved, you can never be a vagabond. If you are in the Lord Jesus Christ, you can never, ever be a vagabond. In fact, I'd rather not be a part of those lukewarm religious circles and spirits. And I'd rather be at peace. Like the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, it's better for a man to have peace in the corner of a home than be in the whole house with a nagging wife. Or you can reverse it. It's better for you to have a little than have much with dysfunction. And that's the word, my friends. That is the word. The word is, can you ever be rejected if the Lord accepts you, if the Lord receives you? And I want to encourage you because there is a body a company, a group, a family that God has reserved for you. Look at the life of David. David in his lowest life, point of his life. As he ran away from Saul and as he went to a cold, dark cave called the cave of Abdullah. There were 300 plus people who met him out in the middle of nowhere and said, you are our king. You are our leader. We agree with you. We are in line with you. We are aligned to you. We believe the same way we, you believe. We, we, we want to be with you. We want to be in this thing. There is always a group of people that God will bring. Hallelujah. And have you heard the phrase <laughs> that misery loves company? Some of you are in company of losers. And people who are just miserable. That's not what this is. And, and some of you are just around people where you could just always have a pity party and just always boom, boom, boom. Shika matara bra. That's not a, that's a group of losers. That's a group of bitter complaining arrogant, pig-headed, spiritually pride, proud people who are always criticizing and cynical, condemning and talking down. Who made you the Holy Ghost police? Who made you the authoritarian of all religion? Who made you an expert of revival? Who, who made you the spokesperson to speak on our behalf? Who, who, who the heck are you? But David was rejected because of righteousness. David was rejected because of his relationship with God. Jealous people will always try to stop your favor. But do you know what they do? They actually expand it and elevate it. God uses your enemies to increase you. God uses your critics to make you great. God uses your struggles to cause you to shine brighter and brighter in his dark and evil generation. So I'd rather be rejected 
for righteousness' sake. Then be accepted in sin, evil, bewitchment, and compromise. Let me tell you, friends, this is a season where God is breaking off the vagabond spirit. And those that are feeling restless, he will give you rest. You feel like you're wandering. You feel like you're all over the place. Feel like you're, you're not meeting your goals. You are unsuccessful. You are not, not accomplishing what you believe God put in your spirit. So therefore you're scattered. You're, you're wandering. You're moving around. Your thoughts, your mind is all over the place. God wants to give you rest. And he wants to bring you to a place where you are feeling settled in him. Not in people, not in things, but in him. Because at the end of the day, only God can heal a wounded soul. Only God can father a wounded child, can adopt a rejected orphan. Only God can. Hallelujah. So in closing today, number one, God is breaking the vagabond spirit off of you. If you felt like you've been a wanderer, and isolated, rejected, banished, fugitive. You have no place to go, no place to be, no place to rest. You feel out of place. God is breaking that off of you. Every curse is broken in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two, God wants to heal the heart of every vagabond. The name, the reputation. He wants to heal the heart the soul of every person who has felt like a vagabond. Because those people have the potential to be the leaders in the next move of God. And number three, I believe there is a people for you. There is a move for you. God has kept you, protected you, reserved you for righteousness sake. For such a time as this, it gets better and better, praise God. He saves the best for last. And the reason why you were rejected wasn't because you were arrogant or rebellious. It's because you are a reformer and you did not fit in to the compromising, Jezebelic, occultic churches and ministries that were all about themselves. Therefore, you stood your ground. Therefore, you said, I don't want any part of this. And even though they attacked you, persecuted you, came against you, still in that place of Adullam, God brought a company, a group of people, and he has raised you and anointed you to lead a new move and to do a new thing. And he has now entrusted you to help break off the vagabond spirit off of his generation. He's giving you rest. He's giving you peace. He's giving you shalom. Hallelujah. Zaba karabrata. Come on, lift up your hands right now. Pray to the Holy Ghost. Shalaman dereduros karabrata vata terederosha. Some of you are in the middle of the greatest transition of your life. If that's you, I want you to say amen. Some of you are in the middle of the greatest transition of your life. And you feel unsettled. You feel out of place. You feel like things are in the air. Things are up in the air. God is going to settle you. Shatata. And the Lord is going to bring you to a place of fulfillment and satisfaction. To those who feel like you're out of place, maybe it's because... Your place is always found in Him. In Christ alone. Not in any other thing. And until and unless Christ alone becomes our only love, then it's best that we are separate from anything else. Are you wandering? Are you going around and around? Rabba Shita Rabrata. If so, you may be open for attack and susceptible to isolation and to being preyed on by predator spirits. But the Lord will protect you. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will bring you in. He will draw you in. Hallelujah. He is your defender. 
He is your defense, your vindication. He is your litigator. He is your counselor, your paracletos. The one who stands by you, fights beside you, and fights for you. If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for you, who can be against you? I want to talk to you, friends, because the Lord is breaking a vagabond spirit. And I'm telling you, there's going to be a flood of souls, new people, a harvest that's coming. So are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to receive the Lord? Are you ready to receive all that God has for you? I want to pray for you because I sense in my spirit that some of you feel unsettled. And I want to pray for you because I sense that some of you, your family members are unsettled. Your family members may be dealing with a vagabond spirit. But let me tell you, the love of God will never fail. And it's the love of God that causes demons to submit to Jesus' name. So Lord, I thank you right now for waves and waves of people coming into your kingdom. Reconciliation. Lift up your hands in this place. Lord, I thank you. You are breaking off the spirit of fear. You are breaking off the orphan spirit. And I thank you right now. Shoot. I thank you right now for the spirit of adoption. Glory. I see the Father moving you to a new place. Moving you to a new people, to the right people. I see the Lord moving you. Hallelujah. Moving you into the place where you were once rejected. Isn't that interesting? Jonah ran away, but he was brought back to the place he ran away from. Wow. Many times the Lord will bring you back to the place where you've been most hurt, defiled, embarrassed, and humiliated. It is for the sake and the hope of restoration. So the Lord is bringing you to rest. He's giving you peace and shalom. Hallelujah. If you're in the middle of transition, say, I am. Lord, I thank you for every single person who's in the middle of transition. Yibaba, healing, healing right now, healing waves. Shh, shh, healing waves. Yibaba, bro, in the mighty name of Jesus. I am the God that healeth thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and I healed your disease. I am the Lord. Your healer. Fire. 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 Shh. Reska tarabrata tarabrata ta. Shh. Somebody say fire. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is translating some of you. Uh. Now, I'm, I'm going to share this one more thought and then we're going to close today. But you see, Cain was banished to the wilderness. Even though Cain murdered his brother Abel and there was a curse on his life. Being in the wilderness is not a bad thing. Because wilderness in the Hebrew means voice and echo. So it is a place where prophets are born. The wilderness is a place where the true oil is pressed. 
true mantles are birthed. It is an extreme place that tests the fabric of your nature and the very DNA of who you are. And the wilderness is a place that will turn boys to men and will turn even the strongest of warriors and will bring them down to their knees. That's the wilderness. But wilderness in the Hebrew means voice and echo because it is a place where you are stripped of everything and all you have is his voice. His word is Jesus, Yeshua, the burning bush, the fire of Yahweh, of Jehovah. Now, why am I sharing this? Because Cain was banished to the wilderness as a wanderer. Some of you feel like you are out in a wilderness. That's not a bad thing, my friends. It is the place where God is refining and clarifying his voice, his truth, his word in your life. It is a place where God is about to break you and remake you. He's about to tear down and build up. It's a place where Jesus and his cross alone will be your sure foundation. Hallelujah. It's a place where you come out from the wilderness. Who is this leaning on her beloved? It is a place where you come out stronger and evolved, metamorphed, transfigured in the glory of God. And some of you feel like you are a wanderer in the wilderness. Jesus. It's because that is a transitionary place from Egypt to your promised land. The transitionary place. You are in that realm, that tunnel, that funnel of transition. Called the desert, called the wilderness. Someone say hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Shenama Tererodo Saka. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for a generation that knows their God. Those who know their God will do great and mighty exploits. Thank you for a generation that knows their God. Someone say amen. Are you dealing with a vagabond spirit? Do you feel like a vagabond? Do you feel restless? Like you are a wanderer and a deserter right now? Shoo! Well, get ready for the Father to do something great in your life, to bring you back into the fold and a fold, and to use and to raise and to anoint you like you did with David. Amen. Friends, this is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim. If you enjoyed today's word, say amen. Give us some hearts and likes, praise God. Share this on your wall. Now, like I said, this week I'm in Arizona. I am in Scottsdale and Mesa, Arizona. And in two weeks time, I will be in Atlantic City, New Jersey and in Pennsylvania. So I'm gonna be in the East Coast and at the end of this month, I will be in Oahu and Big Island, Hawaii with Dr. Roberts Lairdon, the author of God's Generals, one of the best-selling book series. So if you wanna go deeper in the glory of God, you wanna go deeper into things of the Lord, come and see us, especially in Hawaii, because we're doing a training of the glory and a training of the kingdom with myself and Dr. Roberts Lairdon in Hawaii. Do you need a vacation? You look like you do. You look like you deserve a vacation. So come and see us in Hawaii. Consider joining me and Dr. Roberts Lerden and it will change your life, amen? Please do consider giving me a follow here 
and on all my other social media pages, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, here on Facebook. Consider being a subscriber. And like I said, if you enjoyed today's word, give us a heart and a like and a share. But I do believe, wow, that he's breaking off the vagabond spirit. Amen. And he's turning your wandering into rest. If you receive it and believe it, say amen. Well, friends, good to see you today. Love you. I'm here in Arizona. So I'll see you tonight, tomorrow night, Saturday night, and or Sunday. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you, everybody. Shalom.